Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for joining today's webinar titled Optimize IT with Storage Infrastructure Agility for Your Enterprise. My name is Don Lopes with Accenta. First, I want to welcome you all for, for taking the time. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We've got a, a great, great session here today and some, some wonderful speakers with a wealth of, of experience, knowledge, background in storage uh, to, to help us through this, this next 60 minutes. Uh, to, to kind of get us started, I'm going to ask both Scott and Chris to introduce themselves. Scott, do you mind getting us started? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Don. Uh, this is uh, Scott Sinclair. I'm a senior analyst with the Enterprise Strategy Group. Uh, we're an IT analyst firm, and I've been in the uh, storage industry. I've been an analyst for years now, but I've been in the storage industry as a whole, whether in engineering or a product management, product marketing capacity for a, number, uh, for a couple decades now. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Chris. Yeah, and this is uh, Chris Menon. Uh, I do business development for the storage category at uh, Western Digital. Uh, and I've been in the industry for over a decade. And these are exciting times for storage with a growing appetite uh, never ending. And we really appreciate you participating to hear how to take advantage of software defined storage and the Western Digital storage platform building blocks. Thanks, guys. Folks, so, so with that, I'm going to jump right into the agenda. We, we've broken this, this session here today in, into about two different segments. Uh, we, we wanted to provide you know, about half, half of the, the webinar here today, some of the information around trends, state of uh, storage enterprise, and some great research that ESG Group has done. So we're going to spend about, about 20 minutes or so on, on really Scott taking some of the information in which they've uh, been working with their customers, working with different uh, groups out there, some of the surveys in which they've done, and sharing that, that information with you, hopefully bringing some, some knowledge and some, some good information around what, what others like yourselves are, are seeing, doing, and exploring um, in, in both spending and in storage. And in the second half of the session, Chris and I will get a little bit into you know, kind of taking you know, some of that, the, those trends and insights which, which Scott shares with us and talk about some of the things in which HGST and Accenta are doing uh, together as a partnership and some of the solutions which we're developing in the market. So we've got about a, a 45 minutes of, of content, uh, which we're going we're gonna to share here today. And uh, so, so we'll, we'll do that up front. We'll, we'll end and, and built in a, a little bit of buffer and time for questions um, at the end. Uh, but please uh, do do keep keep your questions coming through during the the webinar itself. It's it's uh, always great to try to make these these uh, a bit interactive. Uh, we have muted muted everyone's lines just to avoid background noise. Uh, we're also recording this for for your you know future uh, you know listening if, if there's any pieces you may have missed or if there's colleagues or others that want to visit this on demand. So you should see a a chat question section there in the bottom right. So please, please keep those, those questions coming in. We've also got a couple individuals here join with me that will be jumping and answering some of your questions. So with that, uh, let's, I think, let's jump right into today's discussion. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Scott Sinclair. Scott. Hey, thanks, Don. So, uh, you know, probably a great place to start is uh, to just give a little bit of background on Enterprise Strategy Group. You know, during the introduction, I introduced myself as a senior analyst. And for those of you who may not be familiar with ESG or what an IT analyst does, uh, we spend a lot of time working with, uh, you know, thought leaders and decision makers in the, in, in the industry, CIOs, administrators, as well as the, the key vendors and, and developers um, in the IT industry to understand really what's going on, what are the key trends both at the, at the data center as well as from a technology standpoint. Uh, we have a number of different focus areas, and, and you'll see some of this here around research and validation as well as strategy. Some of you may actually be familiar with uh, ESG and, and our name through many of our validation reports that we have out there. And so while we cover a wide variety of technology segments, uh, myself, I actually I cover the enterprise storage segment. Um, and so like I mentioned earlier, I've been an analyst for several years, but I've been in the industry for a couple decades. And as Chris mentioned, it really is exciting times. And what I really want to do is share some of our 
very recent research, you'll see data points from a number of different studies uh, that talk about the current state of IT, how it's evolving, and then we're going to talk about some of the more transformational technologies such as software-defined storage, as well as flash, and, and the impact that those technologies are having on the industry. Uh, so, you know, Don, if you want to advance the slide. Let's start with kind of the first thing. So, we one of the studies that we do every year is something we call our uh, IT uh, spending intention study. Now, this is a, a study that we conduct on an annual basis, right around the turn of the you know, right around the new year. So, this data is just a couple months old. And while you know, there's a lot of complex questions in the, in the study. I decided to start with an easy one. But let me give you a little bit of background on the study itself. So we talked to over 650 IT decision makers and with a heavy focus on the C-suite. So we're talking to CIOs or VPs um, at that level. It's, it's a broad mix of both enterprise and mid-market environments as well as a mix of both North America and Western Europe across a, a wide variety of industry verticals. And the first question, or one of the, the simple questions that we ask, which I think is, is, is an excellent place to start, is, is IT getting any easier or is it getting more difficult? 68%, as you'll see on the slide, said IT is more com complex than just two years ago. And I just find that fascinating because we're talking about two years ago. We're not talking about 20. Or, we're not talking about even 10, we're talking about just two years ago. And so even within, even with a industry as dynamic as IT, it's evolving so quickly that just two years makes a difference. And then of course, we ask the obvious follow-up question, which is what is driving that complexity? If you wanna to go to the next slide. Well, we gave, uh, we, we gave the same panel of experts uh, a bunch of options, and the most commonly identified response was higher data volume. Now, for those of you that are listening right now in the audience, this may sound obvious. You know, data's been increasing. I think as long as I've been in the industry, I've seen this story that data is increasing. I've seen all these charts that show arrows going up and to the right at some sort of exponential space. But I think what, 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 I, what I find fascinating about this response is not the fact that data is driving complexity. That's obvious. What's fascinating is it was the most common response, and this is at an IT level. These are, these are CIOs that are dealing with shadow IT, that are dealing with a wealth of new users, with, that are dealing with trying to make decisions between on and off premises for hybrid cloud. And you'll see that in some of the, the other contributing factors. All of these scored less than these greater data volumes. Which, so what we're seeing is this increase in data is driving complexity. It's not just, you know, maybe it's oversimplified to say that it's just more data. Because one of the other big trends that we're seeing that, that kind of underlines this whole IT complexity is, is the fact that data isn't just growing. The value of that data is increasing as well. Some of you may have heard excuse me, dealing with a little bit of cold, which I'm sure most, most folks in the audience may be, may be dealing with as well. But uh, some of you may have heard this, you know, the phrase, the digital economy or the digital transformation. Data is becoming more valuable and, and in many cases it's becoming the business. As part of this study, we ask IT leaders, the same group, do you agree with this statement? If you do not embrace digital transformation, will you be less competitive? and a less effective organization. 86% of organizations agree with that, a vast majority. Essentially, digital transformation, how can we leverage data and how can we leverage technology to better enable our business is becoming a key theme, not is it is becoming, it is a key theme of IT today. And what that's doing is, it's not only increasing the amount of data that's collected that needs to be stored and protected, but it's increasing the value of that data. Businesses are looking at how can I leverage my data to become smarter, to become more efficient as a company, to interact with my customers better. We're also looking at possibly, many industries are seeing the emergence 
of digital products and services. So where data isn't just enabling the business, it is also making the business more efficient and ultimately in many spaces becoming the business. And that and all of this value of data and this increase of data is driving up the cost and complexity of IT. So we can move on to the next slide. So if you double click and say, okay, at a high level at IT, data is driving the complexity. Now let's look at, let's, let's double click down and look at what's happening at the storage layer. So this data right here comes from, this is a separate study that actually took place, um, I wanna say in the fall of last year. Now this study, we talked to over 350 storage decision makers. So here we're talking to storage administrators, folks that are in the trenches trying to solve key storage challenges. And we said, identify your top storage challenges, and we gave them a broad list of options. And here you see the top four. And let me focus on the top three for a second. So data protection was number one. The hardware cost of infrastructure, number two. And number three was the rapid growth rate of storage. Now what's interesting about this, or maybe not interesting for someone that's been doing this for a while, we've been asking this question or something similar for, gosh, for years now. And over the past 10 years, because ESG's been around for a while, these three answers have always been in the top three. Regardless of what new technology, what new innovation comes around, these three are always the top three. And they've been in different orders, but essentially data protection, hardware costs, rapid growth rate of storage, always in the top three. Now what's interesting is, and, and that brings us to the fourth uh, storage challenge, which is one of the reasons why I added it, is the complexity of managing and optimizing and automating all that data placement. So if you think about the narrative that this data tells, it says data is growing, data is more valuable, the cost to protect the cost and complexity of storing and protecting that data goes up. Now, what has happened in response is IT vendors and, and IT innovators have said, you know what, we're gonna come out with new products. You know that the, the days of just having a one SAN array option or um, are, are long gone. There's a wide variety of technologies. There's also a wide variety of, of media types. We don't just have spinning media. Flash has emerged. Different types of spinning media and capacities have emerged. So all these new options have, have come about, but what's happened is now we've seen this rising complexity of not only have the top three not really changed, but now we have a new complexity of how do I best utilize all these new technologies and integrate them in the data center to ensure that the right data is on the right infrastructure at the right time. How do I optimize the infrastructure around this? And that's really, those four together are what's driving this incredible interest that we're seeing in software-defined storage. If you wanna to go to the next slide, there we go. So, as part of the same study, we ask organizations another simple question. Are you, uh, are you interested in software defined? So what we saw was pervasive, pervasive interest across the industry for software defined storage. So 50% of organizations of, of organizations identified, or as, as storage decision makers, excuse me, identified their organization was committed to software defined storage. And there was a mix of organizations in, in, in that 50%, there were some organizations that were using that already had deployed software defined storage solutions and some that were getting ready to deploy in just an evaluation phase. But essentially that 50% is, 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 a, is, a, is a strong uh, strong group in addition to an additional 26% that identified themselves as strategically in, interested in software defined storage as a long-term strategy. As the inverse, only 6% of organizations said, you know what, we're not interested in software defined. And the, this pervasive interest is for good reason. Software defined storage, and, and we'll get to this a little bit later, some of the benefits that organizations are seeing, but it's delivering dramatic transformational benefits to data centers. And, but before we get to that, it's probably a good time to level set and talk a little bit about what I mean when I say software defined storage. There's a number of different organizations out there and companies 
that are using the term. I think it got really hot a few years ago where everything was software defined. I even think there was a study that said there's something like 200 software defined storage solutions out there. There, there aren't 200 software defined storage solutions out there. There are probably 200 people saying they have software defined. One of the key themes or, or technology elements that you have to have is the storage intelligence is architected as software and it delivers, and, and I think the benefit is, is what we're going to talk about a little bit, is choice and flexibility and agility in what hardware technologies and what hardware options you can leverage for your data center. I think, and, and the more options, the more flexible, or the more flexibility you have, and also obviously the more capable the solution is, the more valuable it is. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but I think that's really important. And I think that's one of the key themes so when you think software-defined storage, you have to think as part of all the other things it can do, and, and we're going to talk about a, a, a very um, capable solution here in a little bit, um, but of, of all the things it can do, it's that flexibility is almost a bare minimum. Um, when I first started looking at software-defined, gosh, I want to say eight years ago, the narrative on it was, was around that flexibility was very, if, and I don't know if some of you in the audience may remember this too, was very CapEx centric. When I asked people that were looking at software defined or developing, I said, well, why software defined? The answer was always, well, now I can use cheap hardware. Now I can go use server hardware, I can go use server drives, I can go use more cost effective hardware. And that was, that was, that was a narrative that emerged, I wanna say, like I said, eight to nine years ago. And really what we're seeing in our data is that software defined storage provides so much more than that. And I think that's, that's, um, that, that narrative only scratches the surface of what software-defined storage can do. And so we can get to that on the next slide. Hey, Scott, real quick before we, we move to that slide, um, the question came in regarding you know, workloads or, or use cases. And you know, we've, we've got some information on, on the Nixenta HGST side around some of the solutions we're going to talk about later. But would be, would be curious if, you know, in this study, uh, you guys, you know, drove into to questions like that, or if you had any opinions on, you know, where people are are, are looking at, you know, leveraging leveraging technologies like this uh, in their business today. Oh, a gr great question, great question. Because, you know, I, one of the things so we, we've definitely seen some pockets emerge. Um, often, when you're looking at software defined, you're looking at, and we'll, you know, get into this a little bit in the benefits. Areas where, you know, that the company is is more more transformed digitally, essentially where um, I need the speed and pace at which I can deliver IT capability matters to my company. Uh, but but I'll double click into that a little bit. Um, originally, we we started when we started when we studied this a few years ago. We saw. Software-defined storage um, at some large financials a lot. We saw it at some other um, some other places. Another place that continues to be a, a hotbed for software-defined storage is service providers, organizations that are looking to deploy a cloud-like infrastructure and also provide those cloud-like services to its end customers. That's an area where we see another use case that's actually emerged only in the last few years. That's in this most recent study, is we've seen organizations that are looking at IoT type infrastructure uh, are also have a greater likelihood of deploying software defined. That being said, um, we're seeing it, you know, adoption pretty well spread across industries as well as well spread across both medium and, and large enterprises. And I think one, when we get into the benefits, you'll kind of see one of the things, and I'll talk a little bit more about maybe some of the things that's driving certain industries to adopt uh, software defined. Great, thanks Scott. Let's move to the next slide. All right, so the aptly named why software defined storage. Um, here we're looking at, so this goes back to infrastructure agility. I talked about CapEx as being one of the key themes that drove why people were interested in software defined early on. but. Based on our research, so this data is from, we asked people that had deployed, were currently using Software Defined, what benefits have they received? So these are real benefits, and uh, this is just, these aren't all of them, these are just the top 
kind of the top three or four, uh, or the most commonly identified three or four. And the first one I want to hit on is just fundamentally reducing the cost of IT. We talked about CapEx. That's obvious because you're able to leverage different hardware options. You're able to better tune the hardware to your infrastructure, and you're able to better um, have a better tuned and more cost-effective infrastructure to what your applications need. However, the reduction in OpEx was actually more common. And there's a simplicity to this. And, and this goes to the, to the next, really, to the, to the next two benefits, which are expedited storage deployment and simplifying IT. So if you go back to those first problems of massive data volumes driving IT complexity and driving up storage costs and, and all the other storage complexity, essentially, we've hit a tipping point where data volumes and the value of data have increased so much that we're wasting way too much time and effort trying to keep pace, keep our data centers up to date with the latest hardware technology. So we have so much infrastructure now to try to serve all these application needs and all these data needs that every time you know we want to leverage the latest processing, the latest memory, the latest hard drive, the latest flash technology, but with hardware being coupled with software in this old siloed paradigm of, of traditional sand storage, every time you want to leverage the latest hardware, you had to rip and replace everything. Well, then you had to migrate all the data, then you had to you know, stand up a new app, and it, all, that, all that took time, it took effort, it took cost, it, took, it adds complexity, and it adds risk. And it was manageable when you had maybe, you know, when everyone had 50 terabytes or 100 terabytes, but now we're talking where organizations are in multi-petabyte environments, and just the scale of that is unsustainable. And so that's what we see with Software Defined, is by it allows the hardware architecture to evolve while the data access and application stay consistent, as well as, and this is the other thing, I like that middle one uh, on the right there, expedite storage deployment. So new infrastructure, is able to be stood up, um, is able to stand up faster, and this is incredibly critical. We see this, we see this demand emerging quite a bit. In I, I mentioned IOTs, I mentioned service providers, but one uh, IOT environments. But what those two groups have in common is they are finding a way to make money off data, whether they're becoming more efficient or they're leveraging data services as a way to generate revenue, something. So when you, the closer your data is tied to revenue, the more important faster delivery of IT infrastructure matters to your company because delays in infrastructure deployments slows down, uh, slows revenue attainment. Um, and, and that is, to me, the potential of software-defined storage and why interest continues to grow is as more companies take on this more digital business moniker or this more digital business mindset, they understand the need for this infrastructure agility. So if you want to go to the next slide. So then here we looked at some, uh, some quotes from IT executives. This is also from a research study. We had long interviews with why are you looking at software defined? And we, we had software defined with a, with a myriad of other technologies in here. But I love these two quotes because it talks about that simplicity to some extent. Because in both of these, there's this idea of managing orders of magnitude more infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, this idea of all these demands, whether or not your, your data is just growing, or whether or not your data is growing and you're trying to leverage it for business, whatever you need, you hit a limit to how much one person can manage within storage infrastructure. And the ability to, let, to shift to a software-defined architecture and automate or easily manage these hardware transitions and, and the ability to leverage new and innovative hardware like we'll talk about, you know, uh, the HGST uh, WD team are going to talk about here in a little bit, um, just provides such incredible value in terms of freeing up resources to do other things, more business, um, you know, more valuable business tasks, or essentially just increases the amount of infrastructure they can manage by orders of magnitude. And, um, and which becomes critical, especially when you think about one of the other big transitions that's happening in the industry, which is the emergence of flash, which if you want to go to the next slide. 
So I spent a lot of time talking about software defined. Well, one of the benefits of software, you know, the benefit of software defined is this infrastructure agility, which is the capability to integrate new hardware faster and more effectively. And I think it's a good time to talk about Flash. We have seen, we have been living in a wealth, I almost call it the, I actually have termed it the Flash Nirvana, this world of, of how wonderful everything is once you start moving your transactional workloads to Flash technology. And one of the things that's interesting is when we ask organizations that had deployed Flash, and I, and I love this, uh, this data, because the obvious thing everyone thinks about when they think about Flash is performance. I put in Flash, my applications run faster. It's great. It's a wonderful world. But what's interesting is we ask organizations, we had them to identify a whole bunch of benefits. And some of the benefits were things like improved TCO, reduced OPEX, improved CAPEX, because I'm able to deliver, I'm able to deliver uh, performance more effectively, or I'm able to free up bottlenecks within my infrastructure that frees up personnel or able to reduce overall TCO. If you do the or function of all those, if you aggregate all of them and say, if you combine all the, all the organizations that selected one of those three, you get 57% of organizations. So it's actually fascinating that the capability of Flash has reached a point where it's actually reducing the cost of IT at the same rate that it's able to, at some cost of IT, reduce the rate of, um, at the same rate or something close, to where it's improving application performance. And it, it's something that's difficult to believe and non-intuitive at the beginning because often people associate Flash with higher cost because we still think about storage in this cost paradigm of dollars per gig or dollars per capacity. And, and, and to me, I think that is where the, uh, that's A, that's not the right way to do it. And, and because Flash is so transformational from a, from a performance and OPEX or I'm um, sorry, uh, uh, IOPS standpoint, excuse me. And I think th this is probably a good time to, to, ask, to ask Chris and uh, with his expertise over at, at WD, uh, what are your thoughts on, on what we're seeing at ESG on, on the benefits of Flash? And can you talk a little bit about your strategy for or, or what you're seeing around this Flash transformation? Uh, Flash in the... Enterprise applications, uh, for those who have been around, if you remember, was a key disruptor. Uh, I think if you jog back your memory dial, you'll remember OLTP, 7030 workloads, financial trading applications were like buzzwords when Flash was being brought into the enterprise market. Um, and because the costs were so high, they were used for those selective high performance applications. Now, as the cost and the technologies have developed, we are going from 2D NAND to 3D NAND. We're seeing adoption of Flash, and it's, I'm glad to look at the slide and, and see that I think it's very synonymous with what we are thinking. Uh, there's a high rate of adoption because now cu uh, customers are enabling Flash upgrades for key performance metrics, not only for those uh, workloads I described, but also from uh, other kind of workloads from high reads to mixed use to high writes uh, where there is one demand, which is performance. Um, and <clears throat> the way I think organizations today are looking at the cost aspect of Flash is they are looking at cost per IO, uh, which by far offers the best TCO if you're solving a performance bottleneck. So I like what I see the results on the slide that state performance and flash being synonymous. Now at uh, Western Digital, we are enabling this transformation uh, by offering faster, uh, larger capacity uh, devices using 3D NAND uh, technology, as well as using these devices in vertically integrating these into our storage server offerings and our enclosures to offer a storage building block that is based on Flash. Great, Chris and and Scott. I think that 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 this conversation transitions, you know, well well into the second half of of our discussion. And 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 again, thank you for for some great information there because I think it it, it hopefully gives our our, 
our customers and partners attending today's today's webinar uh, a little bit of why why we're here right and and why Nixenta and HGST have, have built this partnership uh, you know many years back right and, and it start started uh, from from a technology standpoint but but has evolved into uh, you know HGST and the WD companies uh, being being investors in Nixenta us having you know, uh, hundreds of petabytes uh, under management together and, and having a lot of experience that, that we feel as as those organizations, I think you said about 50 percent have, have uh, transitioned or are transitioning, another 26 percent are are exploring as as your organizations are hopefully in, 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 in that uh, population. You're you're looking for companies and, and partnerships and organizations that have experience in working together, are, are in it together. Um, in many ways, uh, are, are innovators, right? In, in in the space in which they've they've uh, been been focused on, uh, with with customers, with with the technology itself, uh, provide the feature set in which you need, right? And I think all of those things are are core at what Nixenta and HEST again has been doing for for many years together. And you know, I'm I'm excited to to share a little bit more uh, some of the details around the the latest innovation HEST and extent to have have available that we're going to be sharing the details with you guys here in a second where we've gone in and really tried to to further simplify uh, the experience and day-to-day -day administrative uh, ex uh, workload in, in use cases but also really qualify certify and, and bring you the peace of mind that as you look at these technologies we have done a lot of the heavy lifting for you uh, to to make it easier for you to make that adoption, move these into certain workloads, which we'll talk about here in a second. Before we get into the product specific, what what I think uh, might might be helpful is to ask Chris to maybe take a quick step back. I know there's been a lot of uh, of exciting things going on HGST and the WD companies the last 12 or so months, and I, I think it's a, a great chance for for maybe Chris. Can you share a little bit more about you know, some of the some of the exciting things you guys have going on. I know you touched on uh, some of that a second ago, but uh, maybe there's a few more points you you want to you want to hit on before we get too deep into the products. Absolutely, I touched upon the flash piece and our strategy there. Um, <clears throat> what I want to touch upon is the uh, the transformation that we are making uh, using the flash and the HD components that we manufacture and have perfected. From a devices standpoint and vertically integrating that into storage platforms that offer and create those building blocks that we are partnering with Nexenta um, to offer great TCO for our customers. Uh, now, if you look at our vision for this category at Western Digital, is to continue to provide innovative storage products um, that deliver value um, so our customers can focus on their core activity of their businesses and have not to worry and think about the next storage building block because we have already solved that problem for them. Um, now, if you look at how we are planning and going and doing things around that, is the fact that we started small. Uh, if you remember, uh, our brand is known for innovation, quality, and reliability. We first perfected our strategy, execution, and go-to-market on storage devices. And as you know, we are completely vertically integrated on our HDDs and SSD line of products. And over the past couple of years, we started integrating those high-quality devices um, and, have been uh, and have been successful in what you see on this uh, screen up here from devices to the platforms to storage servers. Um, in shipping those in volumes to our customers. Um, we have started with storage enclosures uh, using our HDDs in 4, 4U uh, form factor and flash and the 2U all flash enclosures. We're able to optimize the total package for the enterprise use, whether it's lowest uh, vibration profile or temperature or package solution TCO uh, or warranty that far exceeds in value in what you would get if you were to buy individual components and do it yourself. So um, how are we helping making software-defined storage easy? 
is that we enable your success by creating these storage building blocks that you see on the screen that you can use to scale out or scale up depending on how your story infrastructure is growing. Um, and I want, want to just briefly touch upon three distinct value props that come to my mind um, in, in our vision for our customers. Uh, one uh, being the vertical integration that I talked about of taking our devices to create advanced storage solutions uh, from, from enclosures that have JBODs to storage servers, uh, where majority of the cost of the bill of materials is storage to cutting edge advanced storage servers that will be based on NVMe. The second value prop that comes to mind is time to market as customers can simplify their supply chain for storage needs by buying a completely tested and packaged solution, then trying to piecemeal the various components themselves. And the third and final uh, value prop that comes to mind is that now customers can buy a complete storage solution from us and rest assured that they're getting world-class advanced technology quality product with the highest total cost of ownership. Great, Chris. Thank you for that. And and I think, you know, you, you touched on building blocks there a second ago, right? And as, as we look at this this next next slide around, you know, these these building blocks, uh, what what we're the technologies in which we're we're going to focus on here today. We, we have a lot of obviously exciting things going on in partnership uh, in, in many different areas, right? And uh, today today we're going to focus more on on how we've taken building blocks that you know are are out there in your ecosystem building blocks amongst ourselves and, and some other standards and, and, and really simplify everything from your you know looking and exploring phases of, of, of your research and trying to define the right technology for a particular need use case uh, you know business problem to the, the procurement process of that and how, how you uh, define in, in a very simple manner the, the, the right technologies and get to uh, figuring out the, the right cost structure for those technologies and then you know bringing those into your business and running those on a, on a day in day out uh, basis today you know Chris again mentioned scale up scale out technologies uh, we've got partnerships uh, with HGST and, and uh, the WD companies deliver technology across across both types of architectures today we're going to really focus more on on traditional workloads and more of scale up architectures so if you look look at this slide, you know what we're really trying to deliver to our partners and customers is the ability to support your platforms out there and, and give you the ability to uh, really support those platforms and the workloads that sit on top of that with some of the leading protocols uh, that that are really out there needing for your core business applications. Offer a a software suite uh, that allows you to uh, really operate your your storage infrastructure but also manage do the analytics and orchestration we try to give you some autonomy on on your server uh, servers of choice leading with some of the, the the biggest names out there and running on platforms that we again we've qualified with with HGST and our server partners that focus on performance and and scale if we look at you know maybe some of the areas that that we've had success together over the years and, and this is this is just a snapshot of those you know it's, it's everything from from flash workloads that are are high performance but also we've had some great great use cases uh, with our customers on on flash for those secondary workloads the workloads that are are you know some of the things in which which scott hit on around cost savings and optimization and how do I apply that to other workloads that I, that I may not think I can, can, can fit into Flash? Um, and maybe that's a, a cost component or a scale component, um, but, but offer that support. Um, we, we've worked with some of the biggest uh, communication companies in, in North America to deliver you know, high performance Flash, running multiple different database applications, and really trying to, again, take the value of Flash, consolidate their footprint, lower a lot of their cost structures around power and other items and and deliver a better level of performance that they had at an extremely cost effective manner we've got a joint customer together in in the service provider world one of the the, the largest here in the states that 
um, look at delivering a, a disaster recovery as a service solution, right? So larger capacities, but wanted to offer their customers the performance in those scenarios and give them a tiering, tiering level of support for those flash. So we're going to talk about some of the technologies that support that. Virtual workloads is an area in which we've, we've uh, worked together uh, with a lot of our different customers on in, in a wide range of different industries and, and use cases. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some integration we've done to simplify that and provide simplicity and value for VMware users. And then an area that, that's always, always uh, you know, been, been successful, been a great spot for a lot of, of organizations to get started with, with a software-defined model is in that backup archive area. Um, we've also seen as, as part of that, you know, video surveillance really take off uh, together with some of the biggest universities, some of the biggest government agencies that are needing to, um, on, on maybe on the research side, keep large amounts of data um, for, for projects or uh, different programs that they are doing studies on or have grants uh, associated to, or, or government agencies that are running CCTV um, for, for uh, you know, a wide range of uh, you know, defense, border control, just base, basic uh, 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 video surveillance for, for buildings, et cetera, capturing that information and retaining that information for use in the future. So th these are just a few few uh, of the different ones, but I wanted to, to highlight those for you briefly. So let, let's get let's get into the technology itself and talk more uh, a bit about that. The architecture for for those of you who might not be as familiar with with uh, you know Nixent and HDST and, and the models which we've uh, been delivering over the years with our our customers and and have over over two exabytes under management overall is uh, this this uh, scale up architecture where we're, we're really allowing you to leverage the Nixenta software platform as an enterprise class unified file and block technology, and we'll get much more into that here in a second. Give you the flexibility on the controller side. So if you, you prefer uh, to have, uh, you know, and, and already maybe have invested and have relationships or contracts with Cisco, Dell, or Lenovo, um, we've gone and certified across all of these platforms, but also give you the flexibility to, to leverage those, those architectures. Um, so you're going to be really running your Nixenta uh, platform in a, a high availability uh, configuration, as we show here, um, and then give you a couple different options that, that Chris is going to go into the specifics on, on uh, Flash side of, of your uh, workloads and needs that we talked about, some hybrid use cases and giving you a couple different configurations and, and needs there, and then also on the high capacity side. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Chris, real quick to maybe highlight some of the key features in, in the 2U24 and the 4U60. Chris, you might be on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Don. As you saw in the previous chart, there are two valid solutions that Don talked about uh, with Nexenta. One was for performance and the other for capacity. Um, let's quickly talk about the performance piece first. As everyone knows, Flash, and I mentioned earlier, uh, is a key disruptor when it comes to pushing the performance envelope. The 2U24 all flash storage platform that you see here is a highly available all flash um, JBOP based on uh, SAS drives. Uh, the enclosure itself has high availability with redundant I.O. modules and hot swappable components. The best part is that you can kickstart or test your application performance by starting off with as low as a half populated enclosure that can also scale as your data set grows. Um, so from a minimum capacity of about 4.8 terabytes uh, to all the way up to 184 terabytes, uh, using the eight terabyte SAS drives um, capacity is possible. So the underlying theme of our strategy here in the flash uh, offering is to create value um, by offering these innovative storage products that are vertically integrated, um, allowing you to buy your building block at the best uh, possible TCR. Now, let's look at the next generation um, 
platform that was talked about for capacity play. Um, this validated solution uh, with Nexenta is our second generation offering, which is fully optimized and fully featured uh, and includes enhanced cable management arms and additional ports. This storage uh, JBOD enclosure scales all the way up to 720 terabyte and again has high availability feature. That was a key consideration for next center validation with redundant IO modules for failover. Um, expanding this storage enclosure has never been easy as you could again start at a low capacity uh, and add more enclosures with higher capacity up to 720 20 terabytes as your storage needs grow. And as a side note, um, if, if you need higher capacity than what you see here on the screen, um, we just started shipping um, enclosures in 4U, which go all the way up to 1.4 petabytes uh, in a single 4U, um, and also have uh, other storage building blocks using NVMe um, and HDDs um, with controllers in them. And we are in the process of getting those certified with Nexenta. So we could definitely talk about those future products in the next webinar. Thanks, Chris. Folks, on, on the software side, we're, we're leveraging really a, a leading software-defined storage solution and technology that's been in the market for quite some time. And, and over the last year, year, actually probably about year and a half, it, the company has really made a, a big investment and, and move forward with our fifth generation Nixenta store platform uh, as really the core core engine for, for this enterprise unified file and block technology. With the launch of that, we also added a, a new component to the, the product portfolio, a technology called Nixenta Fusion. I'll go into the next slide a little bit more on, on that product, but that's really your, your management analytics and UI. That, that really simplifies your day-to-day your -day administration of your Nixenta solutions, uh, solution and solutions, right? So this is not just one, one cluster in a sense, really your entire Nixenta portfolio. Uh, the technology, for those of you who might not be familiar with it, provides, you know, again, file block, NFS, SIFs, SMB, iSCSI, and fiber channel on the, the block side. All your core enterprise features that you expect are in this technology. With the introduction of, of 5.0, we, we also added quality of service uh, and, and enhance some of the long distance replication features in which we have in that. As part of this, this latest release, we also uh, added a, a new vCenter plugin to simplify the administration for those VMware users in your, your business and your architecture to give them the power they need to do what they need around storage while still giving you the management and control you need on your side. Going into a little bit of the ease of management and integration, the, the core that, that the team built this on and around was all around self-documenting and REST APIs. So really enabling you the flexibility of the architecture to do a lot of different things and get a lot of intelligence out of this. Um, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it, but I think it's a, it's a key value proposition uh, and, and from the architecture standpoint that can help you as, as you look at getting the most out of your, your storage from Nixenta. I touched on a second ago, the multi-system management. I think that's another key value of a simple means to understand. Uh, you can kind of see that the side of the second screen, multiple different systems in your environment, drill into those different systems, configure, administrate, carve off pools, et cetera. A very nice, rich uh, analytics platform we, we've also added with widgets that allow you to bring in different snapshots of, of, of those analytics based on your role or things you want to look at any, on any particular day. And then a, a vCenter a vCenter plugin that again snaps right into it. So obviously the vSphere uh, web client, same look and feel as as you'd be administrating the rest of your virtual environments, and 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 really keep in a single platform and have the ease of use and management of your Nixenta systems for those types of users. I know I've sped through that pretty pretty fast, but I, I want to get to some things that I think are important on the configuration side, right? So we, we've talked a little bit about these these technologies on the server side with our partners Cisco, Dell, Lenovo, and Supermicro, and then the software and platforms from from Nixenta and HDST as, as independent components. 
But one thing we've really tried to do, and I think it was one of the, the highlights Scott had in his, his slides around simplicity, is further simplify this, right? And try to, you know, the great thing about the, the partnership with an extent in HGST is, is we've got, in a sense, an answer for any workload that, that you might need file or block uh, 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 protocols for, right? We've got capacities wide ranging, we got the uh, size of drives that you need, and we got a software platform that can scale on performance and on the capacity side. But we know in a lot of cases, as you're looking at uh, delivering these, these technologies in specific needs, you, you, you've got performance requirements, you know your usable capacity, and you need a, a quick, easy way to go ahead and drop in that technology to support those needs. And so what we've done is tried to, to, to bucket these into three different categories, being an all, all flash uh, configuration that has two different, different drive sides and comes in either half or full populated uh, uh, platforms. And so that ability gives you the, a nice way to go and say, uh, you know, I, I need this capacity. That, that then helps us to find the drive size. I, I see it's going to be growing at this this level over the next six, 12 months. So I can kind of plan a little bit ahead. I can then look at some of the configurations that, that the teams have worked together and understand not just the raw capacity side, but when I come down to true usable, usable capacity, I've got a, an idea of what that's going to be. And then when I'm looking to get pricing and procure that, our teams have already defined for those configurations the SKUs, the part numbers, and have at, at uh, our, our leading distributor here in, in the U.S. and um, going to be having here very soon in Europe. Those configurations are already set up. You just tell us what you're looking for. You tell us the platform partner you're looking for, and we can work with yourselves and obviously your partners to go and deliver that, that for you. On the hybrid side, we've, we've done a similar thing where we've taken a couple different size of drives and built a hybrid con, uh, performance and a hybrid capacity, really just depending on the workload in which you need uh, for, and the performance you need for that workload, excuse me, um, in your, your hybrid environments. Has some scalability obviously in there and some flexibility, but we're really trying to, to make it easy for you to be able to consume those, those different workloads. Again, comes in the full capacity uh, uh, enclosures um, or at about a half where we do a, a 24 spinning disk and three, three flash drives to the read write. And so it gives you those flexibilities of ordering this in, in a sense in half and full uh, enclosures and scale that up to, to four across, across your business as your capacity needs scale. And then on the archive side, which is a, a use case we, we see a lot, we, we've looked at some of the larger drives that, that HGST offers to us on the eight terabyte and 12 terabyte sizes and give you those high capacity uh, options. Again, in those half and full populated uh, types of, of uh, enclosures. All, again, have been defined, skewed out, and are available here in the U.S. We're working with Cynix as a mutual distributor, um, and, and most, most all you know, technology partners out there have a relationship with them. So if you're an end customer, pick up the phone, talk to your, your reseller, ask them a little bit more about this program, and they can work with Cynix to easily get pricing on the different nuances of these configurations. With that, again, I've, I know I've, I've sped through quite a bit here in the last few slides, but I obviously want to respect, to respect your time. There's a lot of information available out there today that can, can help you learn more. Uh, one that I, I want Scott to just spend a few seconds on is a great, great paper that ESG put together in parallel with this webinar on a solutions showcase. Scott, can you maybe give some of the highlights related to this? Yeah, abso absolutely. Uh uh, Don, um, so, you know, when we took a look at, at the combined Nexenta uh, HGST or WD solution, you know, it's a lot of impressive capabilities. I think if you, if you check out the paper, you'll see some of our research uh, as well as some of the, the features that really stood out. If I could highlight, I think one of the things that, that really jumped out uh, from the solution versus some of the other SDS solutions out there is really just the breadth of workloads that Nixenta can 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 address, um, and that Nixenta store technology can address. I think when you see a lot of SDS players out there, they tend to focus on one workload type. Maybe it's archive, maybe it's high performance. 
Um, Nixenta really offers a, a nice breadth of capabilities that allows for uh, some really strong consolidation. And then as well, the, the hardware, uh, you know, technologies that HEST or WD talked about, and really the, the variety of, of validated solutions, in addition to really just a strong history. nixenta has been, been a major player in SDS for, for a long time now. Thanks, Scott. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, again, a couple, couple other things here for, for uh, your ability to learn more. Reach out to us, uh, request a demo on, on the Nixenta site. We'll bring the HEST team and experts, Chris and others on his team, to help answer any questions there. We also have a software trial available. Uh, one thing I, I did not add to the slide, but I think uh, it is a, a, great, uh, a great means to get deeper into some of the things on, on the latest version of Nixenta. Uh, Store 5 is a webinar. If you go to our, our website, go to the company webinar section, a great 5.0 webinar that talks about Nixenta Store five and fusion. Um, so with that guys, we've got one minute. And so uh, I, we've got actually some, some really good questions in here and um, I, we're not going to obviously get to them all. Uh, we've got one, one question that I'm going to, I'm going to jump in around uh, an individual asking and saying, uh, I, I, my organization buys a lot of HGST for you 60. So first, uh, you know, from Chris and I, thank, thank you for that. We appreciate that support. Um, I'm not looking at Nixenta Store 5. Will these run Nixenta Store 4? Most definitely. I think, I think it's actually a great question. Uh, we, we've got, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, two, two exabytes of, of storage under management. Uh, a lot of that is, is on previous versions of Nixenta, uh, 4 being a, a good piece of that. That is something that as we do our qualification and testing, we, we do validate. And for these, these 4U60s and the 224s on the Nixenta Store 4 platform, uh, we, we definitely do support that. That said, we, we've also, uh, you know, over the last year and change, uh, have petabytes and petabytes under management uh, with Nixenta Store 5 and received a, a lot of great feedback from our customers on that. Um, I know we're one minute over, but I had a couple other quick, just quick things I think from a housekeeping standpoint. There's a lot of questions on recording slides. How do I get access to the solution showcase? We'll get you guys an email in the next 24 hours and you'll have all that information there. Specific, specifics on configurations, I had a couple questions on that. And um, I, I think probably the easiest for sake of time is go to nixenta.com, hit contact us, or you can email sales at nixenta.com. We'll get the right groups um, from HGST, Nixenta, and our other parties to get you that information available. With that, Chris, Scott, amazing, awesome job, thank you you both everyone thank who attended you. yeah no thank you everyone who attended thank you for taking some time it's, it's been actually exciting the the number of attendees is hold steady the entire time so it's always always exciting to see that because hopefully that means the content is valuable so thank you again look forward to our email wish you a great rest of your day take care everyone thanks Tom.